Hello and good evening friends. This is James again with Knit Case Designs. If you're just joining me, yesterday we made this fantastic loaf of tobacco and bay leaf soap. I'll show you the top here. This unmolded like a dream. You might notice we're doing a new angle today. I like this angle for cutting. Um, I've seen it on a couple videos. I haven't done it yet, so this is a first for me. You can see how that gold mica has really just sort of solidified on the top and it's nice and shiny. And just that little bit of texture on top just gives it some, some extra oomph. I already cut the sample bar, well, not sample bars, the um, other, I had like a one pound mold that I had on the side and I already cut those. So these are actually a great example of what we call a partial gel. So you can see this dark ring in the center. So when the soap is poured, it continues to heat up from the inside out, right? Because that's where it's probably, it's the most dense. Um, and that heat um, causes the creation of glycerin, which if evenly dispersed, like it makes everything kind of shiny and pop, uh, makes your swirls stand out really well. I don't normally gel any of my soaps. Like if they gel on their own, that's fine. But it's not something that I do because I don't usually insulate my soaps. Um, if you add things like sugar or milk, they will continue to like, heat up your soap even more. If your soap heats up too much, it's going to crack. Um, and you can get what they call a volcano on top where it like splits open and like it starts spilling out the top. And that's not a bad thing, but it's not aesthetically pleasing if that's not what you're going for. Um, I usually just leave them alone. I don't usually have issues with soda ash anymore since I started using my water discount and this current recipe. So um, that's the main thing I used to insulate myself for. I would encourage them to gel so that they would um, typically not have soda ash. But you can see how gorgeous this swirl turned out. Get a good angle here. And you can see how the gold mica sort of like swirls in to the whole thing. So that was just gold mica swirled in, or um, dispersed in some sweet almond oil that we added to our swirl. It's not actually dispersed in any soap. So it's kind of like, a, I picture like a mine, you know, this is like a gold deposit. But here you can see the, the partial gel really well. So often when you see that, that just means that the soap was super hot in the middle and it got cooler toward the outside and it just didn't heat all the way through. And again, it's totally fine. But I'll have four little bars of that. So now we'll go ahead and we'll cut this bad boy and see what the swirl looks like in this mold. So make sure you can still see that okay. I might scoot this a little closer. Mm. That's good enough. All right, so we're just gonna go for it. You might hear the clickety-clack of my doggos in the background. So there's our click. Very satisfying. And we'll just pull up this first bar here. So this turned out super well. This is exactly what I normally go for with this design, and it worked out so perfectly. So you can see this one actually went through like I would say like a 99% gel phase because you can see like there are little bits like right here in the corner where it didn't gel but like most of the soap has gelled. I tell you this whiting so interesting. There's the gold on top. Ooh, look how shiny. So shiny. Um, so normally I do use a little more gray in this soap and I bet that that got dispersed more toward the ends. It just does that for some reason. That's got a really nice gold swoop. I love it. Very feathery. Because what I love about in the pot swirls is that you can never truly predict like where your colors are going to end up. So there's a really nice swirl of the the gold looks so good 
So I'd gotten a question earlier today, um, actually about soap colorants, and I've mentioned this in all of the videos, but you know, if you've got money to burn, like, get your, get your colors from Brambleberry, get them from Mad Micah's, or Nurture Soap, or, you know, Hobby Lobby, I think even has some soap colors, um, whatever you want, but if you're looking to do it on a budget, you don't have to spring for all of those fancy colorants. You know, this is blackened with activated charcoal, which is not expensive. Um, you can use turmeric if you want like a nice brown orange color. You can use um, spirulina power powder, which isn't super expensive. You can, uh, let's see, what's another one? Different clays. Like, you could use just kaolin clay and you have a, a little bit of a whiter soap. If you use bentonite clay, it's going to give you a gray soap. So if you want a nice contrast of a white and a gray, there you go. Ooh, I like that. Kind of that little zigzaggy. Mm, so cool. Um, you can add additives instead of colorants to give it more texture and dimension. So you could add poppy seeds, you know. Say you're making a watermelon soap. You can make poppy seeds. Why not? Um... You could add, let's see, what else? You could add flowers. I would usually reserve that kind of stuff for the top. So if you make, say you make like a completely plain Jane, like no colorants in the soap, but you have like dried calendula petals or dried rosebuds, add those to the top. That is so decorative and pretty. Or, you know, let's see, what else do I have here? So I personally, I've got poppy seeds. And... Lavender buds. And you'll see, I've got a, really, a whole mess of crap over here. I need to clean up my, my soaping area is currently in my kitchen. It's not staying there. So I've got just, these are spent coffee grounds. Like ground super fine. I just put in a little jar. Um, so yeah, if you're a coffee drinker, save your coffee petals. Uh, let's see here. You guys have seen my... Pink Himalayan salt, that's a great additive. So you got some chamomile, rose petals. I think I got a pack of like five different herbs and they're, they're food grade. And I got them for pretty cheap. Um, but yeah, like these things do not have to be expensive. So if you find yourself thinking that you can't make soap because you don't want to shell out all the money um, on the materials to make soap. It's actually not that intimidating, you know? I mean, it is intimidating because you're... It still requires a lot. Like, you need a way of cutting your soap. You need a way of molding it. You need a way of blending it. You need mixing bowls. You need things to measure in. Um, so, like, there's a lot of stuff involved. But it doesn't have to be, like, a $1,000 venture, right? It can be lots of things. So I just want that to be encouraging for the folks who want to start soap making, but maybe don't feel like they have the, the capital to make it happen. It does not have to. And I expressed this in my easy peasy soap tutorial. Like that soap was made so inexpensively. Like it does not have to be a very expensive adventure. Um, and it comes out beautiful and artistic. And it's something that you can give to people as a gift or you can sell or you can... I don't know, impress your mom. Sorry, Chauncey, gosh darn it. <laughs> These dogs, I tell you. Um, they bark at nothing. So, think about that. You know, if you're interested in soap making, just do it. Whether it's melt and pour, cold process, hot process, um, doesn't matter. Rebatching, you can buy loaves of cold process soap that are already made and you cut them and you can rebatch them into other things if you don't want to do melt and pour soap. So it's kind of like melt and pour, but not, because you're technically taking cold processed soap, melting it in a crock pot, and remaking it into something else. It's it's really cool. Um, we might do it on here. How about that? Um, but more the more soap tutorials I do for you guys, that's my goal, is I'm going to show you recipes that are inexpensive, that are easy to do, that are creative and artistic, and have a vision, but are also really accessible. Because I want you guys to feel comfortable doing this. 
even if you don't feel like you can afford it. Because, I mean, I invested a lot of money into this when I got started, and I didn't really need to, but now I'm really happy that I did. So I hope that that's encouraging to you. I hope you love this soap as much as I do, because I do. And if you decide to follow any of the soap tutorials I put up, or if you make anything particularly awesome, let me know. I want to see it. And also keep your questions coming, because I love answering them. Um, and we will see you around here for the next video. Have a great weekend.